107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. It is a pleasure to welcome multi-platinum recording artist, four-time Grammy-nominated saxophonist, Boney James. What's up, what's up? Welcome back, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. How does it feel to be approaching another birthday? And I know what you shared with me a little while ago, that somebody <laughs> kind of exposed <laughs> your birth year right. on social media. It's out but, there. But how do you feel around this time of the year when you're approaching your birthday? You know, I'm I'm just grateful, man. Yeah. You know, the, Life's too short. You got to enjoy every day. And uh, I'm just happy to, to see another year. And uh, I'm I'm enjoying life. You know, I, mean, I really feel like I'm in the prime of my life right now. I really do. Well, you know, your fifth, we should mention the Future Soul album, which is your current album, is your 15th album of your career. Right. That's a hell of a milestone, I would say. It's just amazing. In fact, when I'm talking about the record on stage, I just I can't believe it's 2016 already. This is my 15th record. You know, I've been doing this for 25 years now. And just it seems like yesterday that I made all these records, you know, and uh, it's just amazing. So is it true that they say once you find something you love, you never work a day in your life? That's exactly right. You know, I do love it. I mean, it really gets me up every day. And I just uh, so grateful to keep to actually still be doing it and have people paying attention to what I'm doing. Well, come on, man. Come on. You, you're being a little modest. I understand. Uh, no, I don't take it for granted, man, at all. You know, I feel like a real responsibility to people that care about the music that I make. And um, aside from, you know, just trying to be true to the art that's in my head and all that. But I don't want to let anybody down. So I, I work really hard and um, full of gratitude, really. That's the main feeling I have. You're a true Virgo, then. <laughs> Maybe no. that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we go blood, sweat, and tears. When we're really into something, do you put you put your all in your last bit until you don't have any more to give? I guess it's just astrological, man. I can't can't escape it. <laughs> and I'm not big on this whole zodiac thing, but it's it is pretty interesting how some of the characteristics of the zodiac kind of do reflect into at least my life. I don't know about yours, but I'm pretty um, typical. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a neat freak. I like things to be organized, you know. I am far from that, brother. Uh, so I must be born on a different moon and a different star. Oh, see? So there you go. Yeah, there, might, there you go. His name is Boney James. I want to go back. I want to go back to this album mm. called Body Language. Mm. What album number was this? I, You know, I'd have to look that up. <laughs> I, I know that one came out in about 98, I'm going to say. I, I think you're going to say correctly, yeah. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And um, you have a, uh, a wonderful way of doing two things, I notice. You, you often take R&B songs and you revamp them. Mm. Or you'll bring in an R&B artist, and we're going to talk about the strategy and this approach because I think you started a wonderful trend. But let's go. What made you want to put, being so we're celebrating the birthday of uh, a Jackson, and that is the, the king of pop, Michael Jackson. You went back and recorded one of his um, one of his sisters, uh, Janet's uh, song, mm. I Get So Lonely. Right. What, what inspired you to do that? You know, with the, when, I, when I do a cover like that, it's really just because it's a song that I've fallen in love with, and, and occasionally a song will run around in my head, and I'll start to hear it as if the saxophone is playing the melody, you know, because... Wow. And uh, I can imagine it, and if I can imagine it, then, you know, try and come up with a way to make it work. And uh, the, just the song I loved, and I started hearing it in my head like it was my song, so I tried to make it my song. <laughs> well, hey, he made it him song. <laughs> Boney James on saxophone, who's with me tonight. Happy birthday, Virgo. Back to you, man. Thank you, man. Uh, on vocals, Dwelle. Yes. What kind of memories does that bring back for you? It's man? amazing. You know, this is like a memory lane sitting here listening to these tracks. <laughs> so is that this... one, Now, that was about probably 2003, I, I think. You, yeah, one. you're right. You know, you're right and that was that. the first time I had met him. I flew to Detroit, and we cut that in a, a studio that he liked to use. And So how did you hear about Duelet? You know, I just heard him on the radio, and I said, man, I like his sound. He has a very distinct voice and a distinct musical concept, yeah. you know, very creative. And I just was became a fan and, like, reached out to him. And, and like most of my collaborations, it's kind of like that. I just hear people and think, gee, I wonder if they'd be down. I remember you shared that same similar story with me with uh, Raheem Devon. Yeah. And that was on Twitter, though, you and know. And that was on Twitter. Yeah. This was, this was pre-Twitter. <laughs> yeah, this was, well, yeah that, that was pre-Twitter. Yeah, pre-Twitter. Uh, I, I've learned, though, in, in this last few seconds, that you really don't sit down and listen to uh, your music. No, not too much, yeah. I mean, once I make it, you know, unless I'm going to learn it and try and teach it at the band for the live show, I'm kind of just... It, you're you're it like an actor. You know, away, once yeah. you make the project, you don't... <laughs> but, but you have to come back to your art uh, because... People love your music and uh, they love your presentation of over the years. Um, so, f- twenty five years in the game, you you're kind of forced almost to go back and listen to it again. I mean, you re- when you record it, is everything written? 
so that way you don't forget it or do you have to go back and just I don't, I don't to yeah I don't write I don't write too much stuff down you know a lot of it's really, really just sort of created on the fly and lots of times if I have to teach it to somebody else I have to hire someone to write it down because I'm not very I, my handwriting is terrible for for writing and music so I pay someone to write it down if I ever need to. Bonnie James is his name. You know, I find it pretty interesting these days in talking to a lot of the R&B singers that they're going back into the old school technique of bringing in the musicians into the studio because it gives them a certain energy. Yeah. Do you find it different as well when you do get a chance to record with the musicians? Is it a oh, certain yeah. kind of energy that comes across even from an instrumental standpoint? Oh, definitely. I mean, there's certainly you, know, you want to create certain vibes when you're making the record. And some things are great when you're just doing it by yourself and you're just creating it. And, and, and other times it's great to have other people come in and and redo what your original idea was and, and get people playing off each other and things happen that you might not have been able to think of yourself. Do you ever play a song the same way twice? Uh, no, probably not. Not live, yeah. I mean, and that's the great thing about live. You know, when you're making a record, you're trying to do it sort of quote-unquote right, you know, because it's right. for posterity. But when you're playing a gig, it's totally in the moment and you it's free and uh, and the audience is playing a part in all that too and it, it changes the, the show every night a little bit. Boney James with us tonight, uh, about to celebrate his birthday on Thursday. Big plans Thursday would be to work. Yep, playing a show. Not sitting back, not going on vacation, but you're working. Yep. What city? I'm, I'm glad to be working. We're playing in Augusta on Thursday, on Thursday night. Yeah. Wow. That's Augusta, get ready for him. Uh, <laughs> first time in Augusta? Show some love. No, no, we played there a few times, cool. but it's been a minute. Like I was telling Boney uh, off a little while ago, you, uh, you've you been living on your suitcase. You've been on a plane a lot over the you span know, of a it's, long time. It's Traveling is not the greatest thing, but playing shows is totally the greatest thing. Wow. So it's it's really worth it. Well, I know you, you're a people person. You like connecting with that audience. You know, there's just nothing like being on stage with my band and the audience and playing music that uh, that I created. And, and, and it's just an amazing feeling, and, and it never gets old. Never. That's good. Yeah. Well, like like we said at the very beginning, once you find something you love, you'll never work again in your exactly. life. Exactly. Boney James uh, has his 15th album in place. I don't know if he's covering this topic or on this particular album uh, called Future Soul, but you shared with me a little earlier today that you, uh, a little earlier tonight, that you and your wife have been married for 30 years. Yeah, 30 years. Wow. And he just got his oh, first smartphone. Oh, it goes by fast. And I just got my smart, first, first smartphone. <laughs> so, <laughs> but just throw that out there. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> so um, 30 years ago, I don't know what the criteria was in terms of what makes the ideal mate. Mm -hmm. But now that we're in 2016, it seems to me, Boney, from what I'm understanding how the data is coming out, that people are looking at other things to decide potential mates. Okay. One of the things... Are credit scores. So I know that sounds a little absurd. Really? Credit scores. So when you met your wife 30 some years ago, did it did you mind what credit score? Did she ask you what your credit score was? I don't think even credit scores were part of like the discussion <laughs> in society 30 years ago, as far as I can recall. That seems like a new newish thing. So I mean I know they existed, but it wasn't like there was commercials and stuff like there are now I, about credit scores. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Did she ask like, well, what kind of well, she knew obviously what kind of work you did. Yeah, well, hey, when we met, I was uh, delivering pizzas for a living. Stop lying. I was a, you know, of course, I called myself a culinary transportation engineer at the time. <laughs> that was impressive to her, I'm sure. <laughs> but, you know, she was working at the comedy store selling tickets, and I was uh, working delivering pizzas for this little place in Beverly Hills, believe it or not. And, you know, we were both struggling to break into show business. Right. My wife's an actor, director, and, and I was, you know, trying to figure out how to make a living as a musician. So she, so it was really love then, organic love. Yeah, well, you know, love. she came to see me play in my band at the Troubadour okay. in Los Angeles, an iconic place, and and I went to see her play in like a little equity waiver play, and uh, but you know we were still you know we had day gigs, man, trying to break in. Yeah, we were church church mice. Wow, well that that says a lot. Yeah, that says a lot. So so what do you think about people these days who uh, should they look to date somebody based on how high their credit score is? Do you, you ask me if I think that's a good idea? Do, do, yeah. Do you think? No, it's a, I don't think that's a good idea. You don't think so? No, no. Why? I don't know. It just seems very particular. I mean, you know, you got to go with your heart, and and you know, I think there's other ways of finding out a person's character than looking at their credit score. I mean, you know, there's a lot of different factors in what goes into a person's character, and and a credit score is only one factor, as far as I'm concerned. But a very important one. Sure. Well, you don't want someone that's irresponsible, or you know. 
Don't pay like, their bills. Doesn't work or pay the bills, but there's other ways to find that out, you know. Oh, okay. So I can't wait for Boney and his wife to release that book on how you can find <laughs> Why, are mate. you saying you think that the credit score is a good thing? I don't know, man. I'm, I'm totally confused. I don't think that's as important. I really don't. But mm. I can understand why it can become important sure, sure, conversation, sure. for sure. Well, look, finances are important. You know, yeah. you definitely you want to be sure you're all on the same page in terms of how you handle stuff like that. I'll say that. All the best to you, man. Thanks so much for having Happy me, birthday. man. Happy birthday to you. Have Ma- a wonderful, joyous birthday. Thank you, man. Thanks you so too. Much for having I'll me. I'll be working in. alongside you, hey. <laughs> for sure. Let's get into what we like, baby, right here for you on The Quiet Stone with Boney James.